Do you dislike having multiple driver letters for each driver volume? Do you wish that navigating folders in Windows was the same as in Linux? In this video, we'll demonstrate how to mount a volume to an empty NTFS folder in Windows. Let's get started. A dismount point is a directory or folder on a file system where the operating system and its applications can access a storage device, such as an internal hard disk or SSD, an external USB flash, or a SAM provided drive. When the storage device is mounted to a mount point, the file system on the device is integrated into the existing directory tree of the operating system enabling the user to access the files and folders stored on the device as if they were on the local file system. Since a volume is a formatted partition of a physical disk, only the term volume will be used for this video discussion. However, since the C volume is commonly referred to as the C drive, I'll continue using that accepted term. All currently supported versions of Windows and Windows Server can mount a volume into an empty NTFS folder. To accomplish these steps, you must be a member of the local administrators group. The primary requirements are that the volume on which the target folder is located must be formatted as NTFS and the target folder must be empty. However, the volumes to be mounted can be formatted as either XFAT, NTFS, or REFS. The volume can be a partition on a local disk, an external USB flash drive, or block level storage provided by a fiber channel or iSCSI SAN. There are three ways to configure drives in Windows 10 and Windows 11 using disk management, the disk part utility, and via PowerShell. Windows Server adds a fourth method with Server Manager. Any volume that is greater than two terabytes must have the GPT partition style. Right click the Windows Start flag and select Disk Management. The unprepared disk will have a black bar at the top. First, bring the drive online by right-clicking the area that reads Disk 1 and selecting Online. Initialize the disk by right-clicking the area that reads Disk 1 and selecting Initialize Disk. Leave GPT selected and click OK. In the blank area under the black line, right-click and select New Simple Volume. Click Next. Use the maximum capacity and click Next. Select Mount in the following empty NTFS folder and click Browse. Navigate to the folder C, MNT, Data, and click OK, followed by Next. Format the volume as NTFS and assign a volume label if desired. Ensure Perform a quick format is checked. Click Next, followed by Finish, and close Disk Management. To use the Disk Part Utility, open a Command Prompt or a PowerShell shell as administrator and type Disk Part. Type the following commands. List Disk to get the number of the disk to be configured here it's number two. Select disk two. Online disk. Convert GPT. Create partition primary. List partition to verify the partition is created and selected. Format 
fs equals ntfs, label equals 8tb ntfs, quick. Assign mount equals c colon backslash mnt backslash media. Exit. To use PowerShell, open Windows Terminal or PowerShell Shell as administrator and type the following commands. Get dash disk to get the number of the disk to be configured. Here is number three. Set dash disk dash number three dash this offline dollar false. Initialize dash disk dash number three dash Partition style GPT. New dash volume dash disk number three dash file system REFS dash friendly name 12 TB REFS dash access path C colon backslash MNT backslash MS SQL data. Connecting a local or USB drive is pretty straightforward. But what if you need to connect to an iSCSI SAN? Here, we have an additional network adapter that is connected to a private network that is dedicated to iSCSI traffic. Click Start and type ISCSI to bring up the iSCSI initiator and click Yes to start the iSCSI service. In this example, We'll just type the IP address of the iSCSI target and click Quick Connect. Once the target is discovered and its status reflects as connected, click Done, followed by OK. Open Disk Management and the iSCSI target disk will appear. Since the SAN disk is presented to the operating system as block level storage, it can be used just like any locally attached disk. Here, we're mounting the 16 terabyte volume to the C colon backslash MNT backslash VHDX files folder. Open Windows Explorer and navigate to C colon backslash MNT. You will see that the mounted folders and their size column reflects the size of the volumes. The volume that is mounted to a folder can also have a drive letter assigned, providing an alternative method of accessing its data. As a matter of fact, a volume can be mounted to several folders if desired or necessary, but the volume can only be assigned to a single drive letter. The file system hierarchy is maintained even when a folder is shared across the network. The contents of the mounted volumes are reflected in the folders as shown in the UNC paths. When a volume is successfully mounted to a folder, you can rename the folder later if necessary. When a mounted folder is renamed, the changes are immediately reflected in disk management. If a folder to where a volume is mounted is deleted, only the folder is deleted the data remains on the drive or volume. A mounted folder that is deleted also removes the mount point in disk management. You can only rename or delete a mounted folder if the files and subfolders are not locked or in use by a user or an application. You can even mount a CD, DVD, ROM drive to a folder and remove the assigned drive letter using disk management. Once the CD, DVD, and ROM drive is mounted to a folder, you can read, use, and execute the content from there. However, since most CD, DVD media is read-only, you cannot write or create anything in the mounted folder.
Although the file folder structure gives the appearance that all data is read and written to and from the C drive, in reality, data read and written to the mounted folders is transferred to the underlying volumes. Therefore, I.O. is not compromised and there's no penalty. Here, I'm using the IOMETER I.O. subsystem measurement tool to read and write test data to the volumes simultaneously. The new task manager that is shipped with Windows 11 promptly reflects the volumes, their mounted folder paths, and disk transfer rates. Performance Monitor can be used to capture raw metrics using the physical disk counters. Resource Monitor, however, is not a good tool to use as it only sees volumes for the drive letter. Mounted volumes provide an easy, convenient, and consistent method of accessing data from different volumes via a singular drive letter. Mounted volumes are used natively in Windows Server when the failover cluster role is installed and configured with the volume folders located under the C colon backslash cluster storage folder. Each server that is part of the cluster uses these folders to keep pathing the same from failover operations. Also, since mounted volumes mimics Linux folder hierarchy, it can ease user transitioning when switching between the platforms. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new, and found it useful. If you have any feedback, corrections, or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and pass it on to others. And I thank you for watching. Thank you.